Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And we want to thank our newest Patreon. Yay. We want to say a huge thank you to Richard. Thank you again for your support over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. All right. Let's go straight into this. Um, well, let's just play it. Let's just play it and see if we can listen to this. Uh, here we go. Hopefully this comes across without any major echoing. Expedited path to citizenship it will require them to first serve in the U.S. military. Right, five five more more Did you catch that? An expedited path to citizenship would require migrants to serve in the U.S. military. Let's listen again. The new proposal in Washington that would help migrants get an expedited path to citizenship it would require them to first serve in the U.S. military. All right, Fox Science Morgan McCoy joins us with details of the bill which lawmakers say could help solve two problems at once. Yeah, this is exactly what so many have been saying right along, and here you have it. You know, you you can't make this stuff up. It's It's all been so seen for so long i mean this goes back to uh the council of 300 book again like 30 years ago plus it, it go this is ancient but this is exactly what they're doing right in front of our faces so yeah you, you know you have a new proposal in washington that will help migrants get an expedited path to citizenship it will require them to first serve in the u.s military uh-huh yep what can you is this is introduced by hudson valley congressman pat ryan called the courage to serve act the bill would offer qualified and vetted migrants an expedited path to citizenship if they serve in the military. I wonder, are they allowed to serve in, in uh, the PLA and in the U.S. military? Can they, can they serve in the Chinese military and the U.S. military? Can they serve in the Venezuelan military and the U.S. military? Is that okay? Uh, I wonder, you know, because again, we've said before, and so many people have said this way before we did, I might even have been Bill Cooper who was talking about this uh, prior to 9-11. And again, remember, he left the world um, one month after 9-11, after saying 9-11 was going to happen, before it happened. They won't get enough American servicemen to and women to do things against american people so the whole thought is you you have the migrants come in and you know many of them are from nations where they they hate americans because of what has been done to them in their countries now the part that people aren't talking about necessarily is is the fact that you know the u.s is being taken over and yes, these, these migrants, many of them are part of the takeover. And, you know, what it, we could just see, it's just so dang obvious. It's all right in front of our face here. You know, what about all the Chinese coming in uh, in droves, especially more towards now than in the, in, in the past? A higher and higher proportion are coming in. What can you say? You know, this is how they're they're going to uh, be able to get people to do things that r regular people that have lived here and been citizens for their entire lives wouldn't do. Right, and, and you know what I see on on uh, when it comes to the controlling aspect of all of it is just. Uh, either silence or I might hear some chirps about oh this isn't fair or this is wrong by some people who are supposed to play the right hand but they're not going to do anything about it nobody is no one is going to take a stand no one is going to like truly step in the way of this um, it's just going to be they're just going to kind of watch watch the water wash by you know they could do something if they wanted to they could do a lot, but they don't want to because they're all 
being paid off. They're all being told what to do, what to say. And it should, this should just really scream at so many people who think that the government is there to help them to say, hey, there's something seriously wrong. And if we don't watch out for ourselves, obviously, this government, no matter who it is, they're not going to. There is there is like no good beings here. There's no sacred cows. I mean, they all have a purpose and a place to just really kind of screw us over. Yeah. <clears throat> and there was uh, a really good comment that I'll address later on in a, in a really good question. And yeah, w so much of what we see going on is absolutely not fair. Yeah, of course it's not fair. It, it's, again, the system. The system's not fair. This, again, is Kelly Wong, a non-citizen who cannot legally vote in the U.S., but was recently elected to San Francisco's election commission. Let's listen to her victory speech. What, you mean you can't speak Mandarin? Well, you know, if you're living in, in, in the new uh, Californian Republic of China, you should know Mandarin, shouldn't you? I guess they're expecting... You know, everybody that's in California to understand Mandarin. Mm -hmm. I, I would think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, again, the system is changing before our very, very, very eyes. Oh, let's look at her LinkedIn. Wait a minute. She works for or worked for the UN Refugee Agency. Mm. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? Oh, UN Migration Oh, yeah, there's just so many coincidences in this world. We've told you guys we don't believe in coincidences. Uh, you know, and again, we had one family member that thought that AOC was, was the cat's pajamas, the cat's meow. Uh, you know, I mean, whatever terms, that's, that's how old I am. Oh, let's listen. People are, are getting pushed to the very edge. And yeah, of course, you know, there are still those that will take a paycheck to protect the criminals. And they do. And the criminals are still smiling and listening to somebody say stuff that they know is just pure sales and rhetoric. And it's not working anymore. It's not working anymore, but the agenda is rolling straight forward. Citizenship. She even said it right here. Right here, you know, again, they, they Freudian slip all the time because, after all, these are just actors. Our main focus is the federal response. So we have resources and a path to citizenship. <clears throat> so we have a path to citizenship. And then she... Oh, wait a minute. I wasn't supposed to say citizenship. It was supposed to be documentation. Yeah, you know, again, she's under pressure. She's under pressure. She has to actually face people that are screaming at her. But again, she's a puppet. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just noticing, you know, with her standing there, and I noticed a lot of these other uh, politicians that need to stand out in the public. Public. It's like they they're starting to all have their own little support person next to them their person to make them feel strong so that you know when they know they're being really slimy and they're lying to so many they don't slink away there's somebody right there next to him to them to say hey no you're okay you're doing a good job i got your back and and so they're starting to bring out little crowds now instead of being seen on their own taking responsibility for their actions, that's not happening anymore. So you can see the fading away of them showing themselves in public. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There was this horrible shooting uh, yesterday. These three individuals lost their lives in this shooting. They say it was responding to a domestic incident. Um, one of them is a firefighter. The other two were officers. 
And it took him a long time to find the suspect, but this is the uh, alleged shooter, Shannon Cortez Gooden, um, who shot them. And, and the neighbors said that it sounded like rapid fire, like uh, you would expect from a semi-automatic. The reality is, again, they will keep trying to take guns out of the hands of us to the la very last day, which, you know, again, before the takeover of the U.S. happens, might not be too much longer. And it doesn't stop criminals. Of course, the criminals don't pay attention to the laws. And when you look at the cartels, they don't pay attention to the laws. Look at the shootings in Mexico. There's... It's amazing how many people die in Mexico at the hands of the cartels. And you that's what they are creating, the environment here. And you can see this was a tweet um, from the uh, alleged shooter uh, just in support of Barry O and, and Big Michael again. Uh, it's just part of the division. And yet we have the U.S. escalating trade war with China, fearing the impact of Chinese economic stimulus packages. The U.S. has warned China will take action if they flood international markets with cheap goods. You know, as, um, as a, somebody that likes guitar and, and knows um, the guitar industry a little bit, it's amazing to see the quality of stuff coming over from China, which we used to always think was junk. And now you, there, there's products coming in from China that are just a tiny little fraction of the cost of something that's American made or even that's made in Japan or even some other spots too, like Indonesia. And yet the quality and the the parts that are being used are way higher and it is again part of the economic uh takeover that's going on this has all been well planned you know for a very very long time and maybe some people can understand that this really was planned back in the 80s and the 90s but Maybe some people couldn't understand that it might have been planned way back in the 70s, but the 1870s. What? Yeah, you know, the reality will blow people's minds. And, and a lot of people are waking up to the ultimate reality, which it can be something that is absolutely shocking. FBI director says China's cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure now at unprecedented scale because, again, this is very, very close to to go time. And uh, we've we got to be as ready as we possibly can. I just thought this was really interesting. Uh, upper atmospheric winds are at extreme levels according to these sources and i don't trust anything that comes out of any uh, official scientific forces and sources sources that force us to comply to their way of thinking absolutely you know it's it's trust the science we understand that now whether this is true or not i don't know because i mean we've we've watched them utilize tools like when you look at this and you, and you automatically look at reds you might think hot and blues you think cold well we've seen how they've tried to push the climate change agenda with having numbers out in these zones and now they'll co cover the maps uh, with more red colors and, and colors that we automatically think are hot but they have the numbers written down and the numbers that they used to put in, say, the yellows and the greens are now in the reds. And so, in effect, they're saying, like, it's, you know, 20 Celsius or whatever it is. I'm not good with Celsius. Um, but let's just say, you know, oh, it's an ex extremely hot day. It's, it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, 30 years ago, it was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's just part of the agenda, if you understand what I mean. So... They're telling us here that the winds were so fast that planes were coming in um, uh, 45 minutes ahead of schedule, crossing the ocean, topping over 800 miles an hour, where maybe they're typically flying at 500 or 500 and something um, to give us an idea of the atmospheric change. Now, even with 
the winds, if the winds did increase, how do we know that it's natural? Because again, as we start to understand the technology involved, there, there might be a tendency for a lot of people to say, it's pole shift, it's pole shift, you know, or it's planet X. And I'll agree with the planet X in some ways. Absolutely, because there is, you know, a very large um, uh, planet out there with beings that are interfering in our existence. So that part, yeah, I, I will agree with that part. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely there are um, other external forces that are <laughs> that are functioning that uh, we're not completely aware of. It's like so many can see it if you have an activated light body. If your pineal is active, you can see beyond the veil of BS that they put here in this 3D realm. So, you know, there's external forces. But um, I, I don't, you know, when it comes to pole shift, I know that really kind of sometimes scares a lot of people they just think the world is going to flip upside down and and i just don't see that happening at all in any way i kind of watched that for a little while and i just you know my meter went off it's like no you know nothing it's like there would be dates that come up that seemed really really scary you know it's like there's this build up this anticipation but then nothing would happen and i watched that happen for a little while same with the sun. You know, I don't think we're going to have anything catastrophic with the sun either. There's a lot of buildup every now and then. It's like, oh, this is happening. That's happening. But all I see happening, which is good, is, you know, we're getting upgrades. So that I see happening. Well, I think, again, um, they want us to fear the things that ultimately are there to get us out of a dark age. And the thing that enslaves us in this age is the technology. So... In reality, if there was a big solar flare that f completely fried all the electronics on the planet, humanity would wake up. Yeah. And they can't have that. They can't have us waking up. Now, they do plan on taking out the grid in pockets, not in entirety, not the entirety of the grid, not all over the world. No, no, no. They, they can't have that. You know, there will be too much of an awakening. Now, here in the U.S., where they have plans for all sorts of chaos and, and again, uh, open warfare invasion. Yeah, they're going to have uh, the grid out over major population centers uh, for purpose. And they also have told us that six months without the grid could end up with a 90% population reduction just from society imploding in and of itself and the fact that humans are so soft right now and and cannot uh, survive out on their own in nature and and that's been done again purposely for us to us when you look back to like our our, our grandparents our great grandparents you know they would have been much better off obviously and the world was also a lot less populated but here they are intent on castrating squirrels and culling all the deer in the UK and then serving prisoners the cold meat. It's just insane because why? Well, they got to save the planet. You know, it's carbon emissions. And I see more and more comments where people really get it. They're talking about taking out, you know, their, their problem with carbon is carbon-based life forms. Humans are carbon-based life forms. So what they're really saying is y you get it. Uh, you know, two and two together. And we, we've we talked about prion disease, you know, that that, war, that Netflix film by Barrio and, and Michael, Leave the World Behind, hinted at this. Yeah, the deer looked strange, uh, absolutely. Uh, it was weird, you know, very weird scenes there. I think they were probably saying something about, uh, it could be related to this, could be related to consciousness in general. But it is a reality because when hunters get deer, they, they are supposed to send the heads off to uh, be looking for this prion disease. In, in my own personal opinion, you know, these things have been put out into uh, nature in order to make it so people can't support themselves in the old way of, of hunting and farming and gathering. That's why they do it. So, you know, again, when you when you listen to them talking about castrating squirrels and serving uh, deer meat to prisoners, 
uh, yeah, maybe it's a dish full of prions that they're planning on serving out to the population, which is not, not nice. Out of control satellite hurtling towards Earth and expected to make impact on Wednesday morning. It's a European uh, spacecraft that's going to re-enter. They say, don't worry, chances of it hitting any of your houses are very, very low. It's probably going to burn up, mostly fall in the water because after, after all, two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. So, you know, we had um, one of our family members uh, put a statement out when we were talking about how to get out outside of the system and a very legitimate uh, statement of which, you know, what's what is the answer? Well, everybody's going to have to find their own answer and and their own way of of getting outside the system or you're going to be absorbed into the system. It's going to be your choice. People are faced with these decisions all the time and so she put it out that um she's been paying in social security for 50 years uh you know relies on it is 72 years old um doesn't want to go back into you know the workforce and everything and and this is exactly what they have set up it's gonna you know face us with decisions that are almost impossible to make and so it sounds like she has a paid off house. But but again, how about the taxes? I know in, if, if you're talking California, you might have tens of thousands uh, in property taxes, not just California, but, you know, places like Massachusetts and Connecticut, many other places, depending on, you know, the price uh, and the value, the assessed value of your house. Um, we can only speak for what we did. You know, originally my intention was to try to make it living in a in a small trailer, but that was very very crampy. And now with uh, two hundred and you know twenty pounds of dog, uh, nineteen foot trailer is not a good idea. Um, but we still have the trailer because I understand in these times we might have to be fluid. Um, we've we've planted you know. We've got 40 plus fruit trees and bushes, and this is just what we've done in like six months time here on this property, uh, which is like an acre and a half cleared and like a little bit over four acres total. So we're situated where we could, we can grow stuff. We, we, we can uh, try to be self-sufficient. Uh, we have a, a river at the end of the street. Um, if we had to walk down to the river to fish and spend our day fishing, we, we could do that. We could realistically do that. There are, we're not hunters, but the woods are loaded with deers. And when we go by the deer processing plant, uh, which is not far away from us at all, again, it's even walkable. Um, there's 30, 40, 50 carcasses out there at any time. So, you know, you can self, uh, be self-sufficient in this area if given the chance and you're not, um, hit with an invading army. And, and that's the reality because there, there is an invading army in, in the country already and there's more to come. We bought two specifically in one of the cheapest places on, in this country because, you know, if, if we didn't feel that it wasn't our mission to be in this country at this point in time, I wouldn't be in this country. That's just me. You know, I think the U.S. and the U.K. and, you know, the other NATO countries are going to have the, the toughest time in, in what's coming because it's kind of like all that that was done over there is now coming back here. And this is what's planned. So... Yeah, I mean, if, if I was somebody that had the money to um, buy a, uh, a secondary vacation home or relocate, I probably would. Uh, I probably would have done that years ago. But at the same time, we got from the guides that they want us here in, in this country through the worst of the times in order to hold frequency. And so... You know, this is kind of what we view as our mission here. And this is, again, another thing we've alluded to. Some people, yeah, you know, your mission might not be anything like that for this lifetime. What, you know, things that you wanted to work on when you took this incarnation, um, it might not have anything to do with uh, that. It could be a more personal exploration. So for you, you know, hey, 
uh, you know, there's other places that, that might be nice, maybe out there in the middle of nowhere, like the seashells or some other small island somewhere uh, that's not populated and not within um, any major city uh, in five or ten hours. So, you know, the, it could be wonderful for you to just, you know, get out of Dodge while you still can. Um, if you are staying in the U.S., for instance, uh, I, I think there's more options than if you're in the UK because the UK is, again, uh, from what I've researched, it, it's smaller than Texas, but yet it's got like three times the population of Texas. That's a lot of population density. There are some areas in the UK um, that might be a little less dense, perhaps over towards Wales or Scotland. And the Highlands, um, uh, Highlands might be important uh, for those in the UK. Um, yeah, Highlands feels like that might be a, a better option if you're staying in the UK. In the U.S., you know, the states that have the lowest population density, that's why we were in New Mexico, but we didn't like the feel of uh, Michon, Michelle Lujan uh, and her neo-nazi regime there it was brutal and uh, we rolled around the corner tiny town of 200 that we were living six and a half miles outside of to face almost 20 cop cars and we had to drive by like seven different officers like looking at us intently that felt so nazi germany ish that it was like we can't stay here that's just you know no i <laughs> couldn't stand it uh, so, you know, that's why we ended up uh, leaving that area. And we always had backup areas in mind that we had done research on and that the guides had cleared uh, greater areas. So, you know, again, everybody is going to have to make your own decision. I've, I've always paid into Social Security thinking and feeling like I'll never see a penny of it. And that's just me. Because I always knew this time was coming and they're going to remake the country um, and everything is going to change. Uh, a good point in reference might, might be the breakup of the Soviet Union. And I haven't researched specifically what happened to people's assets uh, during the breakup of the Soviet Union in each particular country because each one could be a little different like Russia from say Kazakhstan from say Georgia from say Estonia uh, or Poland even or, you know or East Germany from West Germany again you know the, the world's always changing borders are always changing this is part of how the system keeps us always um, peppered by their blows and disoriented so you know again w what are we to do i i don't think we want to trust in the system uh, as much as you can you want to try to be outside of the system the united states as we know it is going to change what's it going to look like i i'm not sure you know if i had to venture a guess i would say Russia will probably take back Alaska. I would say China will probably absorb the West Coast. Uh, California, Washington, and Oregon will probably become in some way a vassal state of, of China. And they'll probably even uh, send in tons of more migrants. I wouldn't be surprised if, if the Southwest ends up going mostly back to Mexico or uh, at least under Mexican control, and there might be some um, smaller version of the U.S. that's left. Uh, you know, again, it, we don't have all the answers, but there are things that we have seen. So relying on the system means that, you know, we're at the mercy of the system. And, and again, a lot of people felt that way when those dates for men came out back in, in 2020. And a lot of people made decisions that they regret and, and they can never take back. So it's going to be very similar to that. I do think it's going to be very, very similar to that. But it's going to be more economic. It's going to be more of, a, okay, you know, if you want some sort of normalcy, you have to buy into the system and you have to go all, along with the totality of the system. And that could look different depending on what section of the country and who we're under. If we're under China's control, 
then look to what goes on in China, the social credit scores, uh, the the camps that you know the Uyghurs play in all the time, et cetera, et cetera. <sighs> Pick your poison. You know, uh, I think it's best to be in uh, as low a populated area away from main cities as possible, and to try to homestead as much as possible um you know if if you're somebody in your 70s are you going to go and start to plant your fields yourself probably not but do you have family members kids grandkids do you have people of like mind this is where uh people are going to really be searching out others that they resonate with and coming together in the future and then, you know, searching out one another, there is going to need to be a degree of tolerance because even though we might be of like minds, we probably still have very, very different ways of doing things. So kind of live and let live type of type of uh, personality, I think, is going to prevail. I think it needs to prevail if people are going to come together. Um, it's going to be about healing a lot of our own traumas so that we don't... Uh, you know put that out on someone else or if someone else comes at us uh we don't dig into our own traumas and think think that it is about us so i think right now most important thing is to heal your soul and then you know the other thing my parents taught me when i was little is they always said never ever 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 rely on the government for a check don't ever think that you're going to be able to go buy groceries because the government said that they were going to give you anything. Um, you know, we had some really hard lessons like that growing up. You just do not rely on them. Um, they're not there for that. <laughs> they're there for their own selfish purposes. I don't know. Uh, I would look into things like getting getting silver, getting tangibles, things that cannot be taken away from you and start uh, building that up. Um, no idea is going to be perfect. There is nothing that's bulletproof, but... You have to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere. Absolutely. And so, you know, again, with this particular place that we got, um, we have no property taxes because the homestead exemption is higher than the value of the property. So, you know, again, um, could we have gotten approved for a, a bigger mortgage? Yeah, we could have gotten approved for a much bigger mortgage. And, you know, again, uh, been looking at property taxes but as is now we won't have any property taxes and we're hoping to get this paid off in the blink of an eye and that doesn't guarantee anything because they can still take it from you and hence this is why we still have the camper to fall back to in case you know we had to um, and thankfully we do have some friends uh, that have uh, homes you know homesteads farms really that in a worst case scenario we we could go and and we could basically help them work their farm and you know s put the camper on their property and go from there and that that is the backup so you know again just wanted to share with you guys it's it's a tough situation that we're finding ourselves in but again you got to do like this dog and make the best of it source blessing namaste and thank you for sharing your thoughts namaste